to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, first thing on the agenda is appoint Catherine Mellon to the Warren Cultural Council. <laughs> okay. So we got a letter of interest for the cultural council um, from Catherine. And do you have any questions? No, she's not here. No, she's not here. Is she online via Zoom? Nope. She asked if she needed to be. I said you can or cannot, as long as you can read the letter. So we have nobody opposing her being on the council, right? No. All right. Okay. I'll make a motion to appoint Catherine Mellon to the Warren Council. The Warren Cultural Council for a three-year term. I'll second it. All in favor? Chai Hacker, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, Catherine Mellon is appointed to the Warren Cultural Council. Okay. Good evening, sir. How are you, How you doing? doing? Good. How are you? Nope. We'll sign this and we'll let you get set up. You know, there's only so many times I can lead you to the water. Okay. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is vote to give a p permission to the town <coughs> clerk to lower the number of hours for early voting for the election to 25% of the office hours. Would you like to explain? Sure. Can so, you please come up and identify yourself in your position? Come up there? Yes. Okay. Well, up front so everybody can see you. Well, I look tall. I hear you. Probably not. You can stand on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust you to do that. Um, I am Laura Stockley, the town clerk. So the state is allowing um, towns with zero to 4,999 registered voters, which is us, um, to only be open for early voting hours, weekday hours only. This applies to um, at least 25% of regular business hours instead of every hour that I'm open. Um, for just the regular business hours, we still have to be open both weekend days. Starts on Saturday the 22nd. We also do Saturday the 29th. Um, I'm required to be open four hours each one of those days, but this would only pertain to our normal business hours during the week. So if you, and it has to be voted on um, by the Board of Selectmen, and it has to be voted on by October 2nd. So tonight is really the only night you can, mm -hmm. you know, make a, a vote for me, but that way it would entitle us to not have to be open seven hours. Um, Last election, which was on September 6th, early voting was only one week, and my payroll was $1,200, because I have to staff people to do it, and we only had 12 voters, which roughly came up be close to $100 a ballot, you know, for people who voted, and honestly, a couple of those people were workers, so people who actually got in their car drove here to vote was less than 10. It probably be, will be more than that for this election, but I'm not anticipating a huge turnout and my payroll would be actually for two weeks worth. If I can reduce the hours and only do maybe two hours a day, I haven't picked hours yet because I don't know if it was going to get approved yet, but it would reduce payroll probably by at least $1,500, um, you know, which I think is a substantial savings. And they'll still have plenty of, I mean, we would be open at least 24 hours total over the course of 12 days of early voting, and I think that's plenty of time for people to come in and vote early if they choose to do so. It would be, you know, multiple, it's two weeks long. It's from October 22nd till November 4th. And we'll post the schedule everywhere so people would know when we're open, when we're not, you know, mm -hmm. etc. So I would... Do you have anything else? 
constituent um, in the, in town that she they like to see that the board be used in front of the police station I'm not sure if you use that that board um, that posting board. Oh, I can if it's available sure we can hang a schedule there okay but you know the one right before Mason's right. and the police station yeah I, I per, honestly I don't always think about that one because I don't even think I have a key to that one so the it's one not it's not one of the, the ones I, I, board, board, I yeah. always put it up there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah, at the police station. Yeah. I always put it on that board. The one next to Mason's. The one next to Mason's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I okay. post it up there. Okay. Sometimes I forget to take them down. I think it's still up there right now. But the, the last one? Okay. Yeah. I usually give her a hard copy anyways to go on the website, so I can give an extra one. I can. No, that's fine. After I put it on the website, I usually copy it on a card stock because those, if I don't do card stock, the paper kind of curls. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. cool. Absolutely. Um, they have no comments or anything. Anybody from the public have anything? No? Zoom? No? No? Okay. Um, All right, so I'll make a motion to allow the town clerk to decrease the number of hours for early voting for the election in November. Second. All in favor? Rich I. Hacker, aye. Benny Billies, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Next thing on the agenda, vote um, vote for acceptance of the state grant in the amount of $11,542 for the Lucy Stone Park Educational uh, Interpretation Project. So... Do you have any yep. details? Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, thank you, members of the board. In your packets tonight, you should, uh, or the, the, is the original, the originals with me, do you, do you, do you Yeah, do they, they each have a copy. They each have a copy, okay. And on the, bet, on the last page is, is the budget? Yes, on okay. the last page of their, but on their page two. And so, in your packets this. tonight, you'll have the uh, supporting documents for the grant. The town was awarded a state grant in the amount of, uh, Eleven thousand five hundred forty-two dollars, which is seventy percent of, of what the state will uh, reimburse for uh, of the town. The town has to come up with thirty percent of the project. Um, <clears throat> so the total uh, project budget was sixteen thousand four hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty-three cents. Seventy percent, which will be covered by the state, 
and the balance uh, of $4,946.26 will be required to be paid by the town. Um, there has been question as to whether or not the website would be um, uh, part of the project. I've reached out to uh, Melissa uh, Crane, uh, who is the grants uh, supervisor for this project. She was away this week. We're hoping to, uh, to get some clarification on that piece of this grant early next week. So we're doing a matching grant? And yep, so I believe this project was, a, was um, sponsored and approved by CDAC. Um, and this was one of the, the projects that, that was talked about in the committee. Yep. Uh, I think you know right at the time that I was coming on board, um, and we prepared the the grant with CMRPC, yeah. and um, it was submitted uh, back in like April or May. Yeah, Danny, Danny, Danny. yes. Yeah. 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 I think we started that on planning board about time ago, right? Could have been, yeah. yeah. I think that was the original grant that you would yeah. send send me. Yeah, yeah, that was the our first intent of trying to get money for the town. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, the award did finally come down. It came down last week, um, and we just now got to clear up some of the, the minor stuff. There may need to be a uh, an article put on special town meeting for for our matching grant funds okay. to you know to increase that. Uh, I anticipate that you know our, our line item will need to be increased because of more opportunities that are becoming available that. You know that the that the town didn't anticipate for that we could go after fifty percent reimbursement, seventy percent reimbursement on some of these projects that make sense for the town. Okay, it's no brainer. Yeah, put in a little money to get a lot of money. It's a win. Do you have any questions, sir? I do not. No, okay. sir. Okay. Anybody from the public have any questions? No. No. Nobody else. All right. Motion. I'll make a motion to vote. I'll make a motion to accept the grant in the amount of eleven thousand five hundred and forty-two thousand dollars for Lucy Stone Park Education Interpretation Project. Second. All in favor. Rich I Hacker, aye. Nick Billy, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you. It's always great to get grants and get more money in. Uh huh. It's always a good feeling. And this will be a nice addition to the park too. Yes. <clears throat> So, okay, review and discussion of the timeline for submitting articles for the fall special town meeting. So, okay. so Mr. Chairman, um, in your packets tonight, you'll see that the uh, there was a memo that was sent out to all departments and boards, um, notifying them that there's a potential date of uh, November 14th as a special town meeting. Um, and that hopefully that date will be confirmed tonight uh, as the next agenda item. But with respect to that, a memo was sent out to all boards and commissions and departments, respectfully requesting that all, all articles be submitted um, at your earliest convenience, but no later than uh, October 14th at noon to my office, so that we can prepare those and get those to the finance committee and to the Board of Selectmen for review in a timely manner. Okay. This will allow for the, the time slots to, to have the proper review and also proper postings. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Any questions? No. I think um, Jim is doing a good job trying to get everything on schedule. I, I saw you updated the table yep. with the goals and, and requirements. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in a good shape. Yeah. Very good. Anybody from the public have any questions? Zoom? Nope. Okay. Motion? I'll make a motion to hold the special town meeting on Monday, November 14th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Okay. 
schedule and, and going away. So I was a little bit there with the email. It, it was in by the 14th. Yep. 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 There was a timeline. So, so the 76th merge is going to be 7 o'clock, right? No, it's No, it's the 20th. Oh, 7 o'clock. So what, what, yeah, I should, yeah, we'll go to the town clerk right now. She was thinking like 6. should be a little earlier because well even though it's special it's not typically long nobody wants to be there for one o'clock in the morning so other than Derek other than <laughs> so I'm good with six if you're good with six you okay we're gonna make it one again down by then yeah it's gonna be down any I mean it's definitely gonna be down by seven We'll do six o'clock. Very good. Six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And next thing on the agenda, vote and discussion on s setting a date and time for the fall special town meeting. We just did that. Yep. So review and discussion of proposed uh, fiscal year 2024 or well, 24 budget calendar. So, so what was the next thing. Yep. So, Mr. Chairman, as we discussed at our last meeting, um, uh, the budget calendar was in, in draft form. Then um, there has been some revisions and, and corrections made, um, and I wanted to thank Karen for helping lay out the calendar. I think it looks a little bit more easier to read uh, with this in mind. So thank you, Karen. Um, and it kind of it displays the dates and timelines of events in, in, in trying to set some guidance as to departments. Mm -hmm. um, I anticipate the Finance Committee is going to take another look at this at their meeting on Tuesday. Um, so if you guys wanted to hold off a little bit and just look at the revisions, that's totally fine. We can look at it um, at, at the following meeting. Um, or if you want, if you're comfortable with it, we can move forward with it tonight. Um, it's totally up to you guys. Um, but it sets, you know, a timeline of, event, of events. So between now and the end of October, um, all of our finance departments are very busy, especially the town accountant. We're trying to get a year-end close in uh, so that the free cash can be certified um, and submitted uh, to the Department of Revenue for certifications um, that our Schedule A is done correctly and is submitted to the Department of Revenue. Uh, and then uh, around November 1st, you know, the board should start looking at and trying to establish uh, next fiscal year's budget guidelines. So uh, is the board going to send out a a uh, directive to departments as to a level funded budget, a 1% increase, a 2% increase, um, and that, that discussion can be had at the board level um, and determine what the, what the board of selectmen <coughs> would really like to see as their vision for next fiscal year's budget. Um, and then in November 5th, uh, December 15th, um, I would anticipate a memo going out uh, to all departments uh, saying that uh, requests for departmental and capital expenditure requests um, should be submitted no later than January 5th. So starting the budget season early this year. Mm -hmm. So in anticipation that we can clear up any, any issues that need to be cleared up and we, we can communicate with all departments and boards on, on their requests in a timely manner. Uh, and then January 10th, begin the review of budgets submitted by departments and, and department heads and boards um, you know, with the Finance Committee. So to, to engage with them and, and to start the review. February would be uh, prepare initial revenue projections for the coming year, working with the accountant and, and with the treasurer on revenue projections. March 1st, annual town reports due to the Board of Selectmen. This will help the administrative assistant, Karen, very much with getting these reports early so that she can process them uh, and, and make sure that they're sent to the uh, uh, right uh, uh, printers uh, on time. 
Uh, March 1st, again, is usually around the time the state legislature and the Bar Department of Revenue issue uh, their first cherry sheet estimates for the following year. So we'll have a good indication as to if uh, uh, local aid has been increased or decreased uh, right around that time period. <clears throat> and then also in March, we'll have a revenue projection for the coming fiscal year in preparation for annual town meeting. So after we get those estimates from the Department of Revenue to see if there's any new revenue sources, we'll have a, a, a real good uh, projection of the upcoming uh, uh, revenue for the town. Uh, then towards uh, the end of March, uh, on March 23rd, uh, transmit a copy of the budget and warrant articles together with their recommendations there too to the Board of Selectmen, and that will be with the uh, FinCom and the, and the in, in town administrator. Uh, we'll be looking to get those uh, wrapped up. And then on April 3rd would be the, the, the proposed the last day to receive petition articles from registered voters. So making sure that we receive those articles in a timely manner so that they can be processed. Uh, and then on April 8th, I know um, last year the FinCom and the Board of Selectmen met on a Saturday. You know, I don't know if they want to keep with that tradition of meeting on a Saturday to try to accommodate everybody's work schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then a Saturday date could be, uh, you know, April 8th and, and have um, the recommendations be, uh, be discussed between the Selectmen and the Finance Committee. And then ultimately finalize the, 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 the warrants and get them signed at the April 13th meeting. Uh, and then, then uh, FinCom would send the book out to printer to be printed. And then we'd have to post the special town meeting in the annual town meeting and anticipate the annual town meeting on May 9th. Okay. Any questions? No. Any questions? No, I think it's, the only observation is I think it's time to start putting the requirements. Yep. And making this an online so everybody okay. has access to it, or you have the main. Yeah. The uh, master one, mm -hmm. and then keep us up to date. Sure. So we don't lose track and we don't fall behind. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. I believe you can create this calendar right under your town administrator mm -hmm. and have that set as um, what the schedule is to do. Um, you can put it under the, you or under the selectmen or something. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody could see it. So fin FinCom and everybody knows when it's going on. And if people want to see these meetings on certain ones that are public meetings to mm -hmm. view, that they could observe that too. So. Okay. So you want us to put times on the dates? You don't have to put times. No, you don't need times. Just the date. Yeah, yeah, but if you just say the date that we're doing it, then they'll know, residents will know to look for that. Say, hey, mm -hmm. they're going to be doing this on this date. Yeah, there'll that be might a, be something I'm interested in. Yeah, there'll this. be a posting associated with, right. these, with these dates as well, because these were, most of these dates require <coughs> posting notices anyway. So, yeah. so would you like us to put this upon the, this whole thing upon the web page I would yeah once yeah. FinCom looks at it yeah once they're good just post it on there so everybody sees it but yeah. no, anybody from the public have any questions anybody from zoom no, no? okay so I think we're good and we're all in agreement. Let's do it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Establish uh, establishment of a review committee for <coughs> the temporary police station lease proposals. So we had to go into a RFP process, um, correct, and yes. getting proposals. Part of those proposals, they have uh, a committee to review them and put forward the proposals um, that they would like um, to see the town move forward towards. So we are doing a five-member committee for this. Uh, three of the individuals are going to be town employees and two of the individuals are going to be the public. 
So, um, you know, we're looking for two individuals to volunteer to do the do the public side. Um, they must be a resident of our town to do this, and they would have to commit to attending some some of these Couple meetings. meetings yeah. Um, to go over the proposals and do a final presentation to the Board of Selectmen on which proposal they would like the town to go forward with. So, correct? Correct, yep. Okay. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Do you have anything to add? Um, no. Uh, so, it's anticipate. Uh, it's going to be the, the RFP is going to be due back on October 31st. Um, is when all the proposals are due back into um, into the town accountant's office. So um, I, I anticipate the review committee um, to be ready to meet, you know, either the following days, shortly thereafter their submittals, um, and then ultimately, um, you know, making a, a recommendation to the board of selectmen shortly thereafter. Um, the RFP calls for a review committee, um, so this is uh, going in line with with what was. Uh, uh, put out there to the public um, and I did receive one um, email request today from uh, Jim Dusty who was interested in serving on the committee okay, okay. Um, he would be the but he would be a town employee no. yes sir I volunteer for the committee very good thank you very much do you have any objections to that no? No, I'm glad that you're volunteer. Thank you very much for your Thank you very much for stepping up. Thank you. Um, and again, Mr. Dusty would definitely be a, uh, definitely a, an individual with a lot of knowledge to be able to do this, knowing buildings and stuff. So uh, that would be great too. And then, Chief. Yes, sir. You're volunteer. Yeah. I, I kind of figured I'd be on that committee. <laughs> yeah. Don't smile, you're on it too. Someone else? <laughs> I heard that bus coming. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mr. Ferrara. Okay. And oh, no, we got three. I, you know, I'm not sure if well, you wanted BJ. Oh. Well, then. We're now exceeding our. We're exceeding. Because now we need to have. Well, we got four right here, five. So, but then we need to have somebody from the public. So, if we're doing, well, no, we three. No. We'll do. do uh, we got too many town employees. Can we change it to four and three? Yeah, you could just up the number, make it seven. <coughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Seven? Seven, it's okay. Just in case two. You're going to be able to get yeah. enough? So we'll do three residents, four town employees. So we'll do a seven, <coughs> seven member committee then. Um, because you guys are kind of key on this um, with your expertise and then having um, residents, you know, like yourself, have, have a say in it is key also. Um, the stipulation on that, I would say no residents that are actually putting a proposal forward in front of the committee yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> should be applying right. you have to be separate from it Correct. and no no attachments no benefits um, so we're looking for people that have nothing to do with any of these proposals in a personal way or financial way um, so we're looking for two more residents, two more residents. Okay. so we're looking for an email yeah or a letter if they can send an email uh, to you know, Mr. Ferrara, the town administrator, and the interest, and um, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. And then just 
you know, we'll look at the look at who wants to volunteer, and if we get an abundance of them, we'll just mm -hmm. have to choose. Right. Yeah. Um, but if we get two more and that's it, that's our board. So. All right. So who, who are we now? So we've got Jim. So we got Mr. Dusty, both the chiefs, Mr. Ferrar. Okay. And then. Yeah. Mr. BJ. Conrad. BJ should be, well, now we're exceeding our town employees. No, how, how many do we? We have four well, town employees already. Well, okay, so unless we count and then Jim Dusty as a resident. 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 He's a town employee. Mm. He works okay. for the town. Okay. It wouldn't be fair to <coughs> residents. Because we can't, we can't swap back and forth. Either he's an employee or he's a resident. Unless we can do that pay-wise, right? <laughs> 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 We're still paying you, though. <laughs> so it should be residents. Okay. So, yeah, then you have four without BJ. And that's, right there, that's all our town employees yep. to do it. So now we need two more residents yep. to make the board. Okay. You good? Yeah. Could you have BJ as a consultant? You could bring her in if you guys, if the board, because you guys are going to have to, mm -hmm. of course, establish a chairman mm -hmm. and whatever you're doing and the chairman runs the meeting and then um, you can if you guys decide to bring in a consultant or whatever to review it. Because you don't want her to vote on anything if she's going to have to oversee some kind of construction. Right. Yeah. Okay. And but she would be the one to best look, look at it and say, hey, you know. And I think if you guys needed to do walkthroughs, too, to just visually see the buildings, yeah, that's within your purview, too. So. <coughs> yeah, Jim? What's that? Not yet. Not yet. No, I'm, we're all wondering. <laughs> so, is it okay if I mention it? I don't care. So, Mr. and Mrs. Dusty are waiting for the birth of another grandchild. So, they're patiently waiting here to hear the news <laughs> if the grandchild is born yet. And you There's still a boy don't know if you're a girl. <laughs> All right, so we got our committee established so far, and we have to vote on that, correct? So to establish it. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a motion to establish it as a seven-member right. committee. All right, so I'll make a motion to establish a review committee for the temporary police station lease RFP proposals. Um, it will consist of four town employees and three citizens. Second. All in favor. Rich I. Hocker, aye. Denny Billies, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody would like to be on that committee, send an email to Mr. Ferrara. His email address is on the town website under the town administrator. So, or you can, well, probably do an email because okay. all right so next thing is to vote to enter into a contract <coughs> between the town and Pine Ridge Technologies Inc for the maintenance of the town street lights okay Mr. Farrar so Mr. Chairman members of the board um, in your packet tonight you'll see that there's a, uh, a contract uh, before you um, for review and authorization. Uh, it's for the maintenance of the town owned street lights project. Uh, at the beginning of the summer, the board of selectmen had uh, signaled to me that they wanted to go out to bid uh, on the contract um, that was held by Kenko at the time. Uh, the uh, contract was sent out for an RFP. Full process was came back with a bidder of a successful bidder of uh, Pine Ridge uh, Technologies uh, Inc. 
uh, for the maintenance of street lights. Uh, they've been uh, uh, awarded the contract by the Chief Procurement Officer, Tammy Martin. She did a, uh, a review of them um, with regards to their references, with regards to their um, uh, performance in other communities, and she felt that they were, uh, not only were they the lowest bidder, but they were also uh, qualified uh, to do the projects based on the references that were provided. Um, this contract has been approved to as to form uh, by town council. Uh, their signature is affixed to it. The uh, signature of the town accountant uh, certifying that there's funds available to pay the contract uh, for uh, this fiscal year uh, is, is been certified. And also that uh, we are in the process of getting the uh, performance bond uh, back to the town for the full, for the potential full three years of the contract. It is a one-year contract with two years uh, optional renewal. Uh, but the, so the entire contract would be uh, bonded performance-wise, um, as opposed to the last contract where there was no performance bond. Um, it is a it, it is a, a good to have that there in case uh, the town uh, needs it as protection. Uh, this also does also offer um, liquid damages uh, of $100 a, a day uh, that was uh, not in the last contract. Um, that also protects the town. Uh, so there is a, um, it's a pretty well-defined scope of services. Uh, it's very customary to what has been uh, done in other communities. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that they uh, may have. Okay. And the benefit of this is this is a uh, business within our state. Right. So it's not a California business where we're getting on the phone and having to call people and go back and forth. It's something that's within our communities here. Uh, well, basically, Tanko was, was basically like, you know, they were just subbing the work out to local contractors. So Third party. Uh, yeah, so uh, of course the town is going to save some money by, by doing this, by going to the direct source. You know, this is the company that, that will be doing it, yeah. the work. So. And in this contract, we actually have protections to, protections. to guarantee the works. So. All right. Do you have any questions, sir? Two, um, can you remind everybody what a performance bond does and what it means? So it, it, it basically um, it protects the town for performance. You know, so if if you know, for example, there was a lot of work that went into getting this out to bid, right, and in, in getting this the services secured. So a performance bond is, say, for example, if a company was to um, uh, be neglectful. Uh, three months down the road and, and didn't perform the services as rendered in the contract, there's money there that, that we can tap into that um, go after the, uh, the, you know, the bonding company to, to, to get performance money for, for the town. So if we had to uh, cancel the contract, we could use some of that money Correct. to get to a hire contract. somebody. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Okay. To do the work Okay. in, in, the, in the interim. Um, so my other question is, um, so Appendix A, Appendix A, yeah, they have a cost breakdown. Yes. Mm -hmm. is, so is is this our monthly cost? Eighteen correct. So, so eighteen eighty one is, is the is the maximum. Well, is the maximum potential cost per per fixture. You know, if there was if there was no fixtures that needed to be replaced. Then, the, then the, the monthly cost would be eight eighty eight. Oh, okay. All right. So that's our base cost. Just base cost, and then, then if you have to do, uh, if you have to buy equipment, it, 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 you know, the price increases, and then obviously, if there's an emergency response, um, there, there's an uh, there's an additional charges to that as well. So what does the eight eighty eight cover? Uh, there's a routine maintenance replacement. So you know, a bulb you, goes out. Right. Or, okay. Right. But if they have to actually replace the whole thing, thing then, then, then there's, you know, okay. on the photo cells, the, you know, they would have to charge the replacement of the, of the whole LED fixture, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's a charge for that. Okay. All right. And they're actually going out and doing the inspections, checking the lights, mm -hmm. making sure that they're working too. 
Yeah, there's a there's so. a reporting process in the RFP as well, so that they have to report to us, and then um, there's also a a, a a mechanism in there where they also have to notify. Um, you know, they also have to notify the town of of any uh, uh, emergency services or or anything that there's um, that needs to be. Repaired. There's got to be a, uh, a basic uh, batch, ma uh, routine maintenance batch that will uh, they'll, they'll compile lists and give to uh, email it to the town administrator uh, on, on lists that they, that they had to uh, repair. Um, you know, a, a batch of, of, of street lights. You know, so if it was three or four, whatever, or, or ten street lights, they have to you know they have to submit the, those batches. Okay. Any other questions? No. There's an online reporting mechanism or program. Ta town employees in the community must be able to report streetlights in need of repair through the use of an online reporting mechanism or program. So we could actually post that on our website too. Yeah. So if a resident finds a streetlight that's out, instead of just calling us, they report it right to them. Mm -hmm. It's all in the specifications of the bid that was that was set out. Um, so. This this contract has, has has a lot more protections in the town than than the previous contract, and it and allows for um, for termination very clearly <coughs> defined in here at any time if if they're not uh, adhering to the contract. Very good. Do you have any questions, sir? <coughs> no, I think it's part of the process. So I'm okay. Okay. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Anybody from the public have any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Duster, Mr. Sodia. If you could uh, just come forward, Mr. Uh, Duster. Just a quick question. I'll speak loudly. I'm um, Jim Duster, the custodian. Uh, Jim, I wonder if, uh, if you mentioned is there a materials cost and is there an inventory being held somewhere on site in, in town? So, or is that part of the, the cost structure? Uh, there, there are always parts and materials that are used to replace parts or repair parts on, on the so, poles. So the, these, the, these, um, this company has, <coughs> has fixtures that they charge the town per fixture. So there's no, there's no, there's no backup of inventory. They, they have, they're responsible for it. Is so that they, built into their, their maximum uh, fee schedule for the various oh, types of repairs? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, was it photo cells installed per fixture? One hundred and sixty-five dollars. Replacement of an LED, LED fixture. LED, three hundred and five dollars. So they have they they have a um, they have a um, uh, from a, 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 from the last contractor uh, they had a list of streetlight inventory. So that list of streetlight inventory and the the cobra heads that the town has. Um, was published as part of the RFP and was made available to everybody uh, so they know what type of street lights we have in town so that they they would have to have that inventory to, to replace those. Any other questions? You answer your question, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? No? Anybody in Zoom? No. Okay. <coughs> Motion. I'll make a motion to accept and sign the agreement between the town and Pine Ridge Technologies, Inc. for the maintenance of streetlights in town. Second. All in favor? Rich I. Hacker, aye. Derek Billis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next thing, discussion and possible vote on the use of the Cornerstone Bank donation. Um, you know, I, I gave some uh, proposals on what to do. If you know you guys are good with that, um, my my thing is is it should be going back to the community um, in ways that we can use it in the community. It shouldn't be going towards fixing a door or painting a wall or something like that in the building. But it should be going back to where the residents are enjoying the money and utilizing this um, so you know I was looking at doing five thousand dollars to Veterans Council um, ninety five hundred dollars to the senior center 
$10,000 to parks and recreation, $1,000 to baseball, $1,000 to soccer, $1,000 to football, $1,000 to chair. Um, these are all town things um, that all our residents enjoy mm -hmm. uh, in one capacity or another. And I would say do these as a gift account so they can go into these things and use these funds um, for the, the equipment or whatever they need to do for that. So if that's a possibility. <clears throat> well, um, well, I know the Veterans Council already has a gift account, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, I, I'm not sure if these other entities have gift accounts, but if they if they don't have a gift account, then then a gift account would have to be created mm -hmm. by the board or by that or by asking them. Okay. Usually, the uh, sports they get five hundred dollars every year. Yes. So it's built into the budget. Yeah. It's a budget thing. So this is separate? Separate, so yeah. They, I don't think they have an account or anything. No, and, and with the budget one, they actually have to do, they would have to basically look up what they would need. So they would have to find a price, um, identify that to Tammy and say, this is what I'd like to purchase. And Tammy could either do the purchase for them, or then if they want, they can actually purchase it and get a reimbursement. So they could do it either way. Um, that's how the $500 is being used. But what I'm looking at is if we can create something where it's more flexible for them, like a gift account where they can actually, oh, say uniforms for the kids or veterans, the Veterans Council wants to use it for the wreaths across America or say scholarships or whatever they do, they have the control of that money um, like we created for them already. Um, the purpose of the money is getting it out to them so they can use it. Um, in any way they see fit. In any way they see fit. Um, sometimes we're a little over restrictive on how we use the money and it's not used at all because sometimes going through the process is harder than just getting the money mm -hmm. you know um, so that's what I was thinking if you guys have any suggestions or different proposals or anything like that no I think it's fine yeah I think it's good hopefully we don't miss anybody there <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm like, you know, again, Veterans Council, we want to make sure they get some money um, to do their thing. Senior Center, you know, I know they got some things that they want to take care of. Um, this would give them opportunities to purchase some things that they normally would get through the budget process or through grants. Um, you know, same thing with parks, you know, baseball. You know, it's it's smaller. It's only a thousand dollars, but it goes a long way for kids. You know, so. Okay. You know, because I don't know if, if these other departments have um, gift accounts. You you may want to consider. You know, if you've identified these departments, that you um, you may want to have them send you instead of creating all these uh, various gift accounts. Have them have these apartments uh, established, saying that you've been awarded, you know, th these amounts of money, and come up with projects and to submit your projects to the board of selectmen, and you'll approve the money out of your gift account because your gift account is unrestricted use. Sure, can do it that way. Too. Yeah. I mean, I, instead of creating all the, you know, yeah. I, I, no, no, then they can come in front of you and present their project and. Yeah. So they have a credit. You have a credit. Credit. For, for if these are the accounts that, you know, these are the departments you want to uh, award the money to. Yeah. And then if they don't come forward, you still have the money. Yeah. I like that. Sounds good. Well, so Veterans Council already has an account. Mm -hmm. Senior Center? No. I'm not sure. And Parks, probably not. 
<clears throat> okay. All right. So basically, on this, we B, could we could put G. the we could put the five thousand <clears throat> the Veterans Council into their account. Yeah. We could, we know they have one. right. So we could put one in that one in their gift account, and the rest of them, they're earmarked. Yeah. These are amounts are earmarked for these. So we'll just need to keep track yeah. as people spend their credit. Mm -hmm. Just keep track of their balance. That's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stretching. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Give me that. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm good with it. All right. So what is the motion? Just to list these amounts for who so, they're for? So I, I, I would. Um, do the Veterans Council. Yeah, separate? I would. I would do the Veterans Council separate, and then I would, you know, say that. Uh, you, the the out of the um, selectman uh, gift account unrestricted gift account um, that you've earmarked these uh, projects for those amounts of money okay all right so I'll make a motion um, <laughs> hmm okay do the, do the, the yeah I know about, what, what, how are we saying this Transfer money. Let's say that the, you're, you're, um, uh, you, you've you've earmarked uh, ninety five hundred dollars uh, to the senior center for a project out of the. Uh, no, uh, so the transfer council transfer the amount of five thousand dollars to veterans council gift account. Okay, all right. So unrestricted I'm, gift account. Yeah. yeah. All right. Unrestricted. So I'll make a motion to transfer from the cornerstone bank donation to the veterans council. Gift account. Unrestricted. 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 Give gift account. Gift account. Five thousand okay. dollars. Second. All in favor. Rich I Hacker, aye. Derek Bailey, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Okay, I make a motion to earmark out of the Cornerstone Bank donation the following unrestricted funds uh, for use by the following departments. Ninety five hundred for the senior center. 10,000 for parks and recreation, 1,000 to baseball, 1,000 for soccer, 1,000 for football, and 1,000 for cheerleading. Second. All in favor? Rich I. Harker, aye. Teddy Pitts, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. There you go. All right. They got their department getting their money now. Yeah. <coughs> we got to notify them now. So yeah, so we can notify them, and then do you want to see them before you, you know, before you uh, physically award the money to the department? Do you want to hear their project, or? Oh, when they do have a project? Yeah. So you know, if the senior center has a project for ninety five hundred dollars, do you want to hear about it? Do you want to, um, do you want to talk about it beforehand, or you just want to? No, I think it's their money. Okay. Well, maybe just send us a letter. Or an email. Yeah. Just so they spend it on. Okay. Right. Yeah, just so we know. Okay. All right. But I don't think we need to pull them in front because okay. they could take a while for you know us to get them in here and stuff. Mm -hmm. They might have something. You know, the senior site there might sit there and say, "Hey, that would be great money to spend fixing their ovens on something." Yeah. Yeah, but their money. It's their money. They could use it however they want. It's just like you know, those are things that. We can get a town meeting, you know, repairs. I know. And stuff I was like just saying that. an example. Yes, it, it, yeah. If they want to spend it to fix their ovens, they can. Um, but it's their money to do their thing for their their population, their se the seniors, or you know, any of the departments. I just don't want us being overly restrictive again, where it becomes a burden for them to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's been watching with like I know that some of the sports stuff nobody's claiming the money nobody's getting that five hundred dollars it's five hundred dollars the only ones that have asked about it were football <clears throat> and that's it and I don't even know if baseball baseball got theirs last baseball year baseball got theirs they're the only ones that did last year okay but football I know was asking about it this year um, and how to do it and I put them in contact with Tammy um, yeah, I told the soccer club too, and they were trying to come out with a receipt close to $500 to, to, to get it. Well, it doesn't well have even to be if it's over. Yeah, I know. 
it, it could be any amount, you know. Less than 500. No, it's less even if it's over, we will pay them only 500, but the right. receipt oh, could okay, be that over. That make it easier because I think they, every year they go crazy trying to do it like a close to no, 500. Even no, even if it's over. A portion of that 500. Okay. Yeah. Here we go, soccer. Yeah, you know, use it. it. You know, the town gave that money for these things because they believe in them. And I know talking with some people, they're like, oh, it's so difficult to get. And it's like, well, you know the process. No, I didn't even know it was there. Hmm. You know? So each of these teams already have five. Well, the only one I don't think has anything is cheerleading. That's football chair, so no. It's football chair combined? I believe so. Yeah. Hey. David, could you excuse me one second? Yes, sir. Hello? Okay, ahorita voy. Okay, ahorita voy. May I interrupt for one second? Travis, can you come downstairs, please? The sound? Hmm? The sound or something? No. He's on his way. Yeah, the footsteps. Yes. Sit down in front. Oh, right. oh, what you do now? I, I don't know. That's what I'm wondering about. <laughs> Derek has something up his sleeve. Yeah, uh, that, that's a little concerning. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, maybe. We got some hoopos as for. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pizza the other day. Is it Picasso? Picasso, Picasso yeah. <laughs> Thank you to Picasso. So, please help yourself. <laughs> Do we have oh, plates? Oh, wait, oh, wait till we have to take a break. <laughs> yeah, we'll finish up here and then. So it's going to be here? Okay. I, I appreciate right. it. Thank you very we'll much. Move through quickly so we can eat. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Promise I won't talk too much. <laughs> I'll hold you to it. Uh, okay. You're up, sir. All right. I'll make a motion to pay the following warrants. Number 27 payroll, $47,522.88. Number 28 vendor, $373,948.92. Number 29 payroll, $48,557.35, number 30 vendor, $28,939.82. Second. All in favor. Rich I. Hacker, aye. Betty Villis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Make a motion to pay the following bills. W.B. Mason, 4107. Quick North one. No, that's a mistake. Seven. Seven. <clears throat> no. Sorry. Sorry. Northeast IT, 120. BG, $1,519, KP Law, $2,405.86, Mira O'Connell, $4,405, Modern Pest Services, $92, Amazon, $55.50, Easy True Value, $47.96, Kelco, $299.87, C2MA Adams, $857.62, National Grid, $150.83, Verizon, $842, Marlin uh, Printer Leasing, $1,107.23, Whitco Sales, $1,024.99, C2MA Adams Streetlights, uh, $1,164.25, Comcast, $20.26. Second. All in favor. Rich I. Hacker, aye. Derek Bellis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Okay, next thing I have to do this one. <coughs> this is a bill for Joyce I. Hacker. And Rich, you're recusing yourself? I recuse myself. Okay. And 
This is for the payment of the Zoom account in the amount of $15.93. Second. Okay. All, um, all in favor? Derek Bellis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously yeah, with Ms. I. Hocker recusing himself. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from September 1st, 15th, and 19th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Rich I. Hacker, aye. Derek Bellis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously for the minutes. Okay, next thing on the agenda new business. Um, do you have any new business? I do not. No, sir. Do we have any new business? I have nothing. Uh, just report. Okay. Sorry. You hear that? <laughs> you know, a little death there, Chief. <laughs> Get the video up. <laughs> All right. Um, old business. Any old business? I do not. No, sir. Karen, we get anything? Okay. Town Administrator Report. Mr. Ferrari, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, um, the members of the board and, and uh, department heads, uh, special town meeting uh, is uh, going to be uh, November 14th. Uh, encourage all of uh, the departments to get their uh, warrant articles in at their earliest convenience by simply emailing me. A memo has, has been sent out. FinCom has two posted meetings that are going to be coming up in, in uh, October to review. Um, and uh, we look forward to getting those articles uh, to the Board of Selectmen at the uh, earliest uh, time possible. A uh, very important to stay on time. Um, <clears throat> next week is a busy week uh, in, in, um, in uh, Town Hall, uh, the municipal building. Uh, we have uh, two presentations. So one's a uh, uh, an interview and collection of information, but the, the other one is a presentation. Uh, we have a software company uh, called uh, QDS uh, Point uh, in Zobria, uh, which is a, um, a, a one company now under QDS uh, that offer uh, two other softwares, Points and Zobrio, um, and they're going to be making a presentation on um, core tax collection software. Uh, assessing software, cash management, accounting and budgeting, and uh, permit link uh, for permitting. Uh, they are going to start the presentation. Um, they're going to be here on Wednesday, starting at 9:30. Um, their um, timeline and, and agenda is in your packets, um, and what they're going to be spending the timeline on. Um, they're going to be going through all of their modulars. Uh, for um, the software that they offer uh, and this will also help us understand um, if we are successful with the uh, IT grant um, you know to help us understand you know the software products that are that are out there for smaller communities as well you know we saw one of the software uh, for permitting software um, not too long ago with the planning board uh, permit eyes uh, this is another um, competitor that offers another modular called Permit Link, but also offers um, the accounting software, the assessing software, the tax collecting software, and the cash management software, all in, un under one umbrella. So um, the, the uh, memo had went out to departments uh, to please um, uh, come by, and, and they're going to be doing an on-site uh, presentation, or you could also join in by uh, phone or um, Zoom. Uh, link as well. Now, with that, because that's a four-hour presentation, yeah. is there any chance we can have it identified when certain portions are going to be addressed? It's on your your sheet. Next so page. Next page. Next page is the agenda. <clears throat> well, I guess you just answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. I come right for lunch. <laughs> um, and then the next day, Thursday, um, October 6th, 
uh, the Department of Revenue um, is going to be coming in uh, to, to conduct their analysis of the fiscal operations in town. This was part of a grant that the town had received uh, some years ago uh, that wasn't completed because the town didn't have a town administrator at the time um, and probably also because uh, during COVID as well. Um, so um, they are scheduled to come here next Thursday uh, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to be on Monday sending out um, time slots for departments to uh, sign up for um, times to meet with uh, the representatives from the DOR. Um, the department heads have asked to go earlier in the morning. I know uh, the accounting office is, is, is uh, jam-packed with uh, doing their year-end close, so they respectfully asked to go um, uh, at 10 o'clock uh, that morning. They're going to be coming in at 9. They want to meet with me directly. Um, at 10, they will meet with the, uh, the accountant. Uh, and then afterwards, they will meet with other department heads. And they would like to meet on that day as well uh, with members of the board of selectmen individually. Uh, and so uh, they don't want, uh, so there's no um, issue of speaking freely or, or issue of having a quorum. Uh, they would like to meet individually with each member of the board. Um, privately, um, so they will uh, like to do that. Their interviews of the, of the board of selectmen in the afternoon. So I uh, anticipate an email coming out on Monday with uh, time slots. Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> this week on uh, on Wednesday, I had, I had the opportunity to meet with the um, school new, new school superintendent. Uh, as well as um, Mr. Duff and um, Mr. Schwanker and the facilities manager uh, at the school. Uh, we spoke about uh, the Green Communities Grant that was awarded, uh, that the town put in for, um, and the town was working with uh, Mr. Castigian before he had uh, left the town, uh, was working with um, some representatives from um, CMRPC and also um, Guardian Energy Management Services uh, to uh, apply for a Green Communities Grant. Um, there was a commitment that was made by um, the former superintendent that he really wanted to see this energy management system in the elementary school. Um, and so the town forwarded and, and completed the application at their request. Uh, the town was subsequently awarded the application uh, a few weeks ago uh, for $200,000. Um, but the whole total project is $400,000. So uh, I know that there's, there's anticipated some energy credits of, of somewhere between forty to 50000 uh, but there is going to be a need for a level of commitment from, uh, from schools as to you know, what they want to, how they want to fund the balance. Um, and that, uh, that was a discussion that we started to have with the superintendent. She's new. Um, that we wanted to make it very clear that we're going to need some support, some level of support to, to, to make this uh, grant possible and to make this award possible. Um, and, you know, they, their concerns were because they were reduced of their above minimum and they had to make cuts, that there's money is not available uh, for this. So they want to have a further discussion. Uh, they've, it, you know, they inquired me to go out for an RFP. But, I mean, we can definitely do that, and it's a long process, but if we, you know, I, we need to have some type of level of commitment from them, you know, if they're going to want to really have this grant to, uh, to, to know whether or not they, they you know, they, they will budget for the money or have the money in, in some type of reserves. So they want, to, they want us to continue with the process, but, but I, they're not making a commitment on the money <coughs> financially. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I wanted to, I want to make sure that this is clear before we move forward with anything that the financial support is there because the state will pull the money if there's no financial support. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely need to get that commitment from them so they can. It doesn't make sense for us to move forward and put all the effort and go through the whole process, for them to pull it out at the last minute and say no. Right. They had a they had a a, a level of support from. The, the previous administration, you know, back in the spring, 
since the times have changed, since after annual town meeting, they've they've readdressed their and reassessed their 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 position, and uh, it was kind of clear that they don't really have the money. So I don't know if they're going to be planning to to do something for it or or planning to um, to you know work out something in their budget committee. Um, but we're going to need to know relatively soon, you know, how we're you know, going to handle this. Okay. Maybe just keep us updated on yeah. what they decide. Um, and then also uh, this week, I also attended a uh, sewer uh, commissioner's meeting. And at the at the point of the sewer commissioner's meeting, uh, it was brought up as a as a topic um, of. Um, Collectibles, uh, and one of the collectibles uh, for sewer bills was fiscal years uh, 2015 to 2017's uh, Quaybog uh, Regional School District owes some sewer bills um, in, in excess of $28,000 plus interest uh, for fiscal year 15, 16, and 17. Um, I have a memo here from the tax collector. Um, I did uh, indicate this to the superintendent and to the chairman of the school committee, um, and you know, kind of, you know, kind of to gauge them as to what their process are was. Um, they they instructed me that they applied for an abatement, but the abatement was denied. So theoretically, you have to pay the bill, um, and um, the bills are not been paid. Do they intend to pay the bills? Um, they, they, they suggested speaking to their legal counsel. Okay. But they paid them since that time. Correct. For the full time. Correct. It's just these three, what makes these three years different? Well, they, they had indicated to me that they felt that the process in which they were assessed the bills, um, they felt that it wasn't a fair and, and correct process, so they only paid a portion of these bills and they still owe a portion, and the bills that they owe a portion of is totals $28,523.88. Has the process to assess their sewer bill changed? I, I don't believe it has. It's the same process. Right. So they should just pay the, I mean, I don't know what legal standing they would have. Right, they, they've been paying it now. <coughs> yeah. They paid it previously. They're paying it again. And the process, the hasn't, process changed. hasn't changed. Assessed, yeah. Then why would you fight it on these three years? If you not, if you're gonna fight it, fight it the whole time, mm -hmm. right? Well, I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention because uh, I'm assuming at some point um, the Department of Revenue is going to ask the town, have they made every effort to collect for unpaid bills? Um, and I, I realize that this is a an enterprise fund, and I realize that it, it won't have an impact on, on free cash, um, but um, at some point it is an uncollectible, and you know something has to be done. So what are the alternatives if they don't pay it? Well, I mean, the, the sewer commissioners, uh, you know, are, are really upset about this from, you know, from the meeting that they had. And, you know, uh, you know, they had mentioned some vast things, but I mean, you know, I, I, I would caution them as to, you know, any type of shutoff would be, you know, would be a public health crisis, and you can't do that. You just legally can't do that. So, you know, you have to work with the, um, with the, um, with the school committee, and with their budget team to try to, to get these addressed. And they have, you know, they have to work them in their budgets to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Was it already in their budget in 15, 16, and 17? Um, and they didn't pay the bills, which meant they had that much more They money. paid a portion of the bills. You yeah, know? yeah, right, understood. But if they budgeted for the full thing, they didn't pay them. Yeah. Right. And where'd that money go? So there's Did we actually 28500 something dollars unaccounted for. Correct. Did we get our three years worth of reports? I have not received those yet. We still haven't received the audit that was just done. Correct. Yeah, that was that's what I'm referring to, right? We were supposed to yeah. get three years. Can they said they were going to email them over, but I. Well, can you ask again for that? Yep. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything. Either. 
one thing from you. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. Thank you. Um, Did you have any questions? No, sir. So, um, <clears throat> also this week, uh, the bids came back for the grid screw project uh, at the sewer plant. Uh, there was two um, uh, bids that were uh, submitted. Uh, one was from AK Industrial for $198,800. And the other one was from Pride Inventor Environmental Construction for $272,621. Um, so <laughs> so <laughs> as, I, yeah, as I had indicated um, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, it is getting real tough out there in terms of uh, getting quotes, you know, estimating. Uh, <coughs> Prices have just gone up drastically, uh, and I mean, you know, Ty and Bond anticipated this project at, you know, a few months ago at a hundred and twenty-nine thousand dollar, hundred thirty thousand dollar project. You know, I called the um, uh, Ty and Bond a few weeks ago, and they they increased it to a hundred and forty-five thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. So now, now <coughs> nobody's even close to that. Nobody's even close to that. So now. We have to anticipate if if the board wants to move forward with the project, um, you know we're going to have to increase um, the amount of use of ARPA funds for the, for the project. We, we don't really have much choice. It has to be fixed. Right. And we need to get it done. Yeah. And, and this is going to keep on getting more expensive. Yeah. Right. If we don't do it now, then it's mm -hmm. just going to get worse. Next year it could be two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The lowest bid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, Tanya Bond is uh, reviewing the references. Um, these is just, this is just a preliminary of what the, the raw numbers came back. So they are checking references, uh, making sure that there's no um, complaints lodged against any of these companies by the state. Um, and then they will make a recommendation um, shortly thereafter. Um, so that's where we are with that project. Um, I'm sure. Um, that um, you know, you're going to see this type of um, you know action happening. You know, it's it's just the, the way the, the economy is right now. It's it's very tough to to find um, qualified individuals bidding on on smaller projects. That you know, when there's other projects out there that are multi-million dollar projects that bigger companies are looking to go for. You know, instead of trying to get a smaller project in the area, so it, it's tough. It's it's very very tough out there. Um, I do also want to mention um, that the tablets. Thank you, Derek, for your assistance on the tablets. Uh, they were uh, they went live this week. They're they're up in every municipal building. Um, people have gotten their pin codes, with the exception of the highway department. Um, they will be getting their codes on Monday. Everybody else has gotten their codes, and the system's been up and running. So it's a learning cur curve. It's a learning process. Um, you don't expect 100% perfection, believe me. Uh, but you know, it's just a, it's one step at a time, and it's uh, a step in the right direction. And it's for emergencies. You know, in case we need to notify anybody who's in the building of an emergency, uh, it's there. Are people using it? Yes. Okay. Good. So your buy and make is. It's, it, it was just it just rolled out two days ago. So yeah, no, yeah. yeah. But um, it's you know people have been using it. Okay, there you go. good. Yeah. You missed one. And well, I wanted to say that I, I'm sure the chief was going to mention something about that in his report. Um, okay. Referring to the interviews. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll let the chief. Yeah. You know, you good. Yep. Good. Yeah, do you have any questions? Anything else? No, sir. Anybody from the public? Questions? Anybody from Zoom? No? Okay, moving on. All right, um, comments and concerns. Do we have any comments and concerns? Yes, sir. Come on up. Price is right. Jerry Millett, Chief of Police. I said three things real quick. Um, one, at the next meeting, you guys need to uh, set a date for Halloween in time. Oh. Yes. Actually, you should probably up. do that tonight. I don't know if you had to put it on the... 
I didn't. And then the next question was, I know what we have talked about phones. Is that still a thing that we're looking at as new? Oh, phone void system? phones? Yeah. Um, yes, but it's running into some issues. Yeah, yeah. so the, uh, the phone system, um, because it, uh, if, if the town was to move in the direction of a voice over IP, um, we would have to upgrade the internet speed first in order to do that. Yep. We're at a very, very slow um, megahertz uh, for capacity and speed. Um, so that, that would have to be addressed first before we could move forward with that. Um, in terms of the phones here in the building, um, we do have um, access to some uh, refurbished phones that have been working. Um, yeah, the only reason I was asking is because I was possibly going to start looking for a new one for my place, because that's what I have. Oh, okay. So I'm not happy with the service I have right now. And then my last thing was, um, recently uh, the board had voted for the Board of Health to go into a regional collaboration with the Department of Public Health. Mm -hmm. It's called the Mill Towns Public Health Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just asking to see if we can look into, and Chief Will Boyle will back me up on this. A lot of our calls that my guys deal with is mental health. We're not mental health clinicians, we're cops. And I just want to see if this is something that we could tap into where maybe we can get a mental health uh, clinician out of working with the Board of Health that can help us uh, deal with some of the issues that the town residents have. Uh, so like an on-call person that... Correct. If you have a call and it relates to something... Right. I know a lot of big cities, they have the, the funds to have their own clinician. And obviously, it's a full-time job for them. There are little towns like us. Uh, it's not a full-time job. We don't have the money to, 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 to hire these people, but if the regional collaboration that's a grant funded, uh, I don't know if that's something we can look into. And that could be somebody we get for nine years, because it's right. for a nine year. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I mean, it could potentially not. get you somebody, a clinician that you can call on um, to deal with some he mental health issues. Mm. Um, and that person could address those with you. Right. Um, they would, at that time, my understanding is they would actually be a town employee when they're here, even though they're a regional employee, they would be a town employee when they're working for us. Um, <coughs> a special town special employee. Town employee. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's a good idea. Probably. So I could get look at what other PDs do too and see if that's something I can get from them. And, um, Maybe work with Mr. Ferrara and yeah. the Board of Health on this. So the uh, under that grant, they're going to be um, the the host community. Um, Palmer is going to be um, hiring the coordinator, and the coordinator is going to be responsible for sending, you know, uh, one of those um, clinicians as as part of their services that they were going to specialize in. Along with, they're going to also have an additional staff for food inspection services um, and, and some other health related matters um, so that that could be a possibility that you could tap into um, that grant mm -hmm. Did you anything? in the meantime if you have really a need we can talk a little bit half of our staff is mental health and they do all the time you know telehealth mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, exactly. well, I think you're looking for somebody, so if you have somebody that's having some issues. Um, it might not rise to us having the second. It's not a criminal thing. It's right. not something that's, but it's a concern because, um, you know, again, the person might be thinking to hurt themselves or whatever else. And this clinician to, could talk to them and then follow up one through right and follow up later on right so. yeah we do all that all the time especially for you know um, people who try to yeah this this grant would pay for it all though in a regional thing yeah what I'm, no what I'm it saying is cost us meanwhile anything. we get to the grant I could get somebody to help you in that matter mm -hmm. while we get the grant because I don't I don't think it would be appropriate to pay for something that is behind me. You know, it will be conflict of interest. But for me, we now we can get somebody there if you need anybody. I, you know, I can I can talk into the company, and I'm, I'm sure they. I think they would have to be brought on as a special time employee. Mm -hmm. 
they'd have to hire them. Yeah, and there'd, be, there'd have to be some type of insurance and, and everything yeah. for them to. You know, this is all yeah, done under the collaboration. I think that's our collaboration. It's all all it's all included. In. Yeah. yeah. But I like your thinking. I, I just don't know if we could do that legally. No, it'd be tough. Chief, did you have any input on this? Uh, do you want to come forward, please? Yeah, sure. How do you feel about having somebody consult for mental health? You, you guys are working in the ambulances and yeah, you know, I mean, you know this. this I don't think there's any secret that I don't think there's any secret that uh, you know in our society that we're dealing with more of those calls and not necessarily on a regular basis. So uh, you know that that has become something that you know we're seeing a huge increase in percentages and it and it's and it spans all age groups. Um, we spend you know considerably more time even in the elementary schools and stuff now dealing with children that have uh, behavioral or uh, mental health issues. Um, so it's certainly something to be addressed. Any, I think any and all avenues that we could look in, and go down, I think should be exhausted so that, uh, you know, I think that people, you know, I, I think people have a hard time, you know, as they see us dealing with some people sometimes and, 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 you know, they may interpret things, you know, the wrong way or they may interpret things in different ways sometimes. So, you know, we, we want to give that individual that's called, that, that they may need, be in crisis and may need help every option they can have so that they can avoid being, you know, uh, you know, dealing with law enforcement or dealing with us for that matter. Mm -hmm. We can have someone that can come in and, 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 and help uh, resolve that situation without going down a certain road. That's obviously what the intention we want to have. I mean, we don't want anyone hurt. We don't want to cause any further harm to anybody that may be in crisis or something. So. You know, having a clinician or something, somebody available, and especially an outreach program after an incident occurs, you know, that would be. I think that would be good for all parties, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, anything else? No, I think it's a great idea. I do too. <coughs> there. I support everything we were talking. It's good. Mr. Ferrari, you have any concerns about it? No, I think it's a, a great opportunity um, <coughs> to work uh, with that new grant. Yeah. I think it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. All right. All right, Chief. We'll have to get a meeting together with the Board of Health. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. You're good initiative. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. All right. Um, any other comments and concerns? I was going to bring up the Halloween thing because I'm already starting to get the phone calls on our end too. So I don't know if that wants to be put on the next agenda, but you know the board will have to set well, something. That's not until the 13th, though. When, when are the possible dates? So we. Well, it's always, do it right it's right always on Halloween. Uh, you know, it's always that. It's more the the time. West Brookfield is doing it on Halloween. Everybody's doing it Halloween. Well, yeah. That's what we've done in the past. So I've been, I think it's five to seven. Usually that's, yeah, usually it's 5 to 7. I think they've gone as early as 4.30 one time, but I, normally it's about 5 to 7. I think we could look back in the previous uh, uh, times that have been set at, at other meetings, but I believe it's 5 to 7, and, and I know that... Uh, that's what um, it was last year. I talked to Jim McKean earlier today. He messaged me asking if I had heard anything from the board. I told him I would bring it up this evening, um, but they are planning on their... Um, uh, the we usually do the thing at the fire station. We do a uh, costume uh, judging contest. They have a, a live DJ at the, the park in West Warren there on the parade route. So uh, they were looking to do all of those things as usual. He did mention to me that they were not doing the haunted house up here this year due to a conflict with the elections, I believe. So uh, he did he did tell me that. That thing was awesome. Yeah. So I mean, I you know I know he's on tonight. I, I, I he told me that there was a conflict with reserving the gym, and that's why there, they, there was not enough yeah. time for them to to set up or or or, or of, break it down yeah. because of the election. So Sue told Lori that they were only going to do it on non-election years. Okay. Uh, I think Unless, he, he just is there some place else we can do it? I don't. I I think Jim just. Jim, are you signing on? Jim McKeon. You there? Is he on? He's there. I don't, there was noise coming out of the speaker, but he's having some technical issues. Yeah, it could be. Well, let's handle a Halloween first. Show him muted. What about, like, Highway Barn or... No, thank you. Yeah, a lot they, of equipment they, probably, they would never be able to move out the equipment they yeah. have in there. You know, I mean, I'd love to volunteer a station, but we just we can't do that either. It's just, it's just no. too much stuff. I think Jim's ready to talk. Jim, you there? You can. 
You hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So we're, we're looking okay. at... Hey, yeah, usually... Uh... Yeah, that's loud. There it is. You there? Halloween's usually... I think we're running into technical issues with you, Jim. Do you have any other place that you can do the, the haunted house? I need uh, a trick or trunk. Oh, they do something. Uh, yes, he did mention the trick or trunk, uh, or trunk or treat, I should say, uh, right. at the elementary school, too. I don't know if he's well, doing that. Yeah. Play no. Uh, yeah, that's right. They did move it to, mm -hmm. to play. They did a little haunted house there. They did do a haunted house there. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah they, that's right. They did combine. That's right. That's that's right. Last the students did, did a good job. Yeah. That was done by the students. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can work something and out. usually... I think he has and usually with trick or treat, it's uh, from five to six thirty, and then the parade usually at six thirty. Yeah, yeah, that's. Sounds... It's usually yeah. always six thirty. Don't say I had the best class to last year. Yeah. yeah. So trick or treatings from five to six thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that. Yeah, yes. The, the parade usually starts in West Warren at six thirty. It, it, the whole event usually runs through seven o'clock. But yes, he's correct. The parade usually starts at six thirty, so it would be five to six thirty for trick or treating itself. Okay. Is that going to be enough time? I mean, that's what we've done in the past. So. It starts getting really dark after that. Yeah. yeah. It's sometimes really cool. I mean, it's an hour and a half of trick, trick or treating. That's a lot. You can, like, hit Warren and West Warren. That's what we do. <laughs> it's a lot of candy. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the those, de it is, keeping the those dentists candy. employed. Yeah. <laughs> they never come to my house, though. No? And I put a big bowl of candy out every year. So you never get them in my house either. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you live in Booneyville. I live in town. Booneyville. I'd be wondering if I <laughs> if somebody came up my driveway. To... Yes, sir. I usually get about 250 and I live on a dead end street. <laughs> Very good. Do you do big candy bars? Because I got to know if I'm coming here or not. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. I do. I do Kit Kats. The big ones or the little ones? The little ones. You, you could have two or three. <laughs> <laughs> two or three of them. <laughs> Only the little kids. <laughs> Come yeah, to my house. Yeah. <laughs> Come to my house. I just put the bowl out. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so five to seven, pick? right? Five to six thirty. Five to six thirty, and then six thirty to seven to pre. will start in West Warren. Yeah, well, how long does it last? An hour? Uh, yeah, I mean it usually takes about an hour, but I mean the parade will actually commence on North Street and then go down to to the fire station. In so we could do five to six thirty trick or treating, and six thirty parade starts. Yeah. So this way it covers. I believe the thirty first is on a Monday. It, it is. is. Yeah. Okay. Let's vote on it. We don't need to have it on the agenda. It's all right. I'll make a motion to have to set the Halloween hours for um, October thirty first. Uh, trick or treating from five to six thirty, and the parade starting at six thirty. Second. All in favor. Rich Hacker, aye. Derek Billis, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. We know when trick or treating is now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, no other comments and concerns from anybody? Yes, sir. I have one. Yes, sir. So Derek posted something last week, so he kind of gets the credit for this. But a big kudos to uh, Breezel and Orchards mm -hmm. that were voted the best mm -hmm. uh, cider donuts in Central Mass, right? It was, yeah, Central Mass. That's that's big. There's a lot of places that do the cider donuts yeah, and do like apple orchards and 20, stuff. Twenty, twenty uh, farms on that list. Yep. 
and they were. Well, they are one. the best. They yeah. are the best. Yeah. Oh, so that's awesome. Big donuts are like <clears throat> addictive. They're good. This Especially is, uh, even when you get them the day after and you microwave them for a little bit, uh, and you get ah, oh, they're so delicious. <laughs> she uh, said she wrote me back, um, Breezy Lance, and she said, after this was published, we have been selling out of donuts. That <laughs> is the greatest free advertising we ever had. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I know. I went there the other day and I grabbed the last package and somebody came out and goes, <gasps> I go, sorry. No. Nope. Yeah. You're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, get them while they're hot. They're yeah. available. Yeah. Right when they're out, those are the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're still good even after the day, next day. Oh. Yeah, they usually don't make it home at our house. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who would eat those donuts. <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations to Breezelands. Awesome yeah. job. Good job. Yeah. And thank you for providing such a delicious treat to our town. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No. Did you have anything? No, sir. Okay. Ms. Ryan? Anybody else from the no. Anybody from Zoom? Comments, concerns? No, it's only Jim. We wouldn't be able to hear him anyway, so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're on to the fire department report for August. Chief, you're up again. Oh, you didn't? You didn't hey, you was the last Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, good evening, Adam Malloy, Fire Chief. Probably said that. Should have said that before I was speaking before. <coughs> Apologies. <laughs> Uh, month of August report, uh, we responded to 28 uh, fire incidents in, 2000, uh, in August 2022. Uh, they ranged from activated alarms, uh, motor, motor vehicle accidents, medical assists, ele uh, electrical issues, mutual aid, which we're seeing a huge increase in, uh, canceled uh, calls, service calls, structure fires, vehicle fires, and rescue or ex extrications. Um, ambulance, we had a very busy month, 68 calls uh, in August of 2022. There were five ALS intercepts required. Uh, we are on target once again to blow our statistics out of the water again this year uh, already. So we just came, it's, yeah, our call volume just continues to, rate, uh, to rise every year. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's always tough to keep everything going, but uh, you know, so far we've caught up with, uh, or we, we're keeping up with all the calls. Uh, several inspections, including smoke and carbon monoxide inspections, uh, four propane tank inspections. Uh, we do a wide variety of inspections of smoke and carbon monoxide. Um, you know, anytime a, a house, I think I mentioned it before, anytime a, a property is transferred or sales is, is done in town, we're required to go in by law to conduct a smoke and carbon monoxide inspection uh, to make sure that the detectors are in place and they are functioning properly so that that sale is transferred and it's, and it's a safe property to inhabit. Um, some of the activities and meetings, uh, we held uh, a couple trainings on the fire side of things, which consisted of some truck uh, equipment checklists and maintenance, as well as uh, air pack uh, confidence drills. It's always important to keep them, keep everybody, make sure that they maintain their confidence in their, uh, when they're wearing their air packs. We do certain um, athletic drills to make sure that they are able to, to conserve their air while on that so that they can work, uh, you know, longer or as long as possible and safely as possible. Um, so we do those drills quite often. Uh, War and EMS, uh, we did a, a, an additional training uh, on safe stretcher operations in preparation for our new ambulance coming in, which should be coming in in the next week or two. Uh, it was slightly delayed due to a couple of little things they had to make some adjustments on, and um, um, but it's it's coming in very soon, so we will be switching things over uh, from one to the other. It, it will take some coordination because we have to coordinate that between the state, um, not only the o Office of Emergency Medical Services, who uh, dictate all the things we do on the ambulance and how we how we run everything. Uh, they have to be involved in switching over everything to make sure we they know we have a new rig coming. Uh, we also have to work with the registry, obviously, and in town insurance to make sure that there's insurance and everything is, is done correctly there. So there will be a downtime of approximately two days while we're while we're going from one truck to the other, but we'll rely on mostly mutual aid to cover that as we make that transition. But that's normal of any department as they do that, especially a department that only has one ambulance. So. Uh, we can't just throw things in there and wing it. We have to make sure that everybody gets familiarized with it. Uh, it's done properly. We have trainings on it uh, to make sure that we have as much of a flawless uh, changeover as possible. Um, 
Let's see, we partnered with the uh, Warren Community Elementary School and we moved our antique 1847 hand pumper down to the elementary school. If anyone's been down there, it's displayed in the foyer. Uh, when you first walk in, it's kind of a neat looking thing. We're still working on it. We have, uh, we're gonna be making some plaques to kind of have some information based on it, but it actually looks like it was meant to be there the entire time. It's kind of, it looks just like a museum display. It has beautiful uh, lights coming down right on it. And you know, if you haven't seen it yet, take a walk by it because it's a, it's a really neat piece of history from the, from the town. And there's a very unique story behind it uh, and how it was how it came to be. So some of those things we're going to hope to get up there so people can walk by and they can kind of see it. But I, it truly does look like it kind of belongs there. It's really nice. Uh, and as Jim mentioned before, I forget uh, this isn't really an August thing. It just happened recently. But we, you know, down in, in the budget area, I did mention that we are posting a full time position. Uh, we did have a uh, one of our full time firefighters left for another job opportunity out of state. Um, you know, like most, a lot of times they can't afford to work here sometimes, and we've made those things better, and we continue to, to work with that with the help of the Board of Selectmen and the Town Administrator and the support of the town. Uh, unfortunately, we still can't compete with some salaries, so, I mean, we do lose people from time to time. The nice thing is a lot of them end up staying as call firefighters. They don't leave because they want to leave. They leave because of other opportunities and family, you know, uh, you know, things that they have to take care of, but a lot of times they'll stay around as a call firefighter, and, and that's the case with, the, with this individual. But um, uh, myself and, and the town administrator conducted interviews over the last couple of days. We, we interviewed four final candidates. Uh, I'm looking to put an offer into one of those candidates tomorrow, uh, see if they will accept the position. But I want to thank Jim for his his effort and uh, with working with me to, to conduct those interviews. I think they went really well. We had some really good candidates come through. Some real top-notch yeah, candidates. Yeah, some, some great uh, qualifications. Uh, he did the same with the police department recently. So. You know, having Jim on board is, has been a, a, a great thing for those types of things. I and I want to thank him for his effort for that. So uh, that's that's basically all I have for the report. Very good. Thank you very much, Chief. Right. It's good to be hiring new people. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, uh, the other day I was in here doing the uh, tablet thing. I, mm -hmm. I, I really forgot to ask you. I wanted to buy uh, tickets for the. Uh oh yes, yeah, we do have some available. Yeah. So we have the uh, the the spaghetti supper is October fifteenth. Uh, it's a couple Saturdays from now, and uh, we do have tickets available at the station. They will be available at the door. Uh, you know, this is the first time we've done the event since COVID, so uh, we're going to get out, uh, you know, get, get all the rust out of the system. But we've been doing this for years, so I'm sure that uh, we'll bounce right back from that. I'm sure it'll be a good time. We usually see a couple hundred people come through there. It seems to be a really nice event for the community, and I, it, honestly, we seem to get a lot of support. I, and I think most everyone from the town has been there at some point, and uh, we almost never have any negative things to say. Everyone just kind of comes out. Sometimes it's a little chilly, you know, in the bay and everything, but uh, everybody seems to enjoy themselves. And so, it's uh, delicious. Yeah, it, it's good. They do a great job. And I, as far as I know, this year, we have some, uh, some fantastic donations rolling in from different restaurants providing the food. Um, we're still finalizing those little things, but uh, um, but it looks like we'll have some, some great donations. We usually do a raffle, some baskets that are made available from not only members of the fire department, but also local businesses to do donations for us. So we'll have those as usual, but uh, we're looking forward to getting back to that little bit of normalcy and, and having people in the station again. So uh, that'll be a nice event. So that's the 15th. Tickets available at the fire station. Uh, they can call down and reserve a time to come down and get them. A lot of the members will be out over the next couple weekends selling them. You'll see them uh, around town as, as they have in the past. Um, and they're also available at the door the night of. How much are they? $15 okay. per ticket. Very good. Also, also we, we talked about a, a donating a computer. Oh, so yes. I, I got a computer for you. I'm going to drop it off next week. Thank you, sir. So that was... Uh, um, we have a, what's called a, a we have a couple computer screens in each one of our stations, and we have a really nice system down there that's called I Am Responding, which has become a, a great thing for us. And not only does the uh, it's, it takes computer to run, it's a very simple program. That's the only program we run with a computer, and it allows the members to and, and dispatch over in Rutland to see who's on duty. They 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 know exactly who's at the station, what they're doing there, and everything. They know if they, we have trucks out of service for any reason. Uh, it scrolls the different calls. It comes across as if a call comes in and even alerts and everything and it also the nicest thing about it is especially for a call department like ours is if we do have a call all of a sudden the firefighters are able to sign on so I know exactly how many of them are coming and where they're coming from so those days of oh boy I hope I get somebody I hope I got at least five for a major call and this and that I can look at my phone I can refresh it as long as I have service I can see exactly who's coming you know how many are there I know how many trucks are going to get out the door you know in my head so that's been a nice addition to the uh, to the department to, to kind of keep track of that a little bit better we had the same system at station B but unfortunately 
I don't know what happened, but the, the computer malfunction had an issue with it, and it's no longer supporting that. It's no longer coming up. And Derek happened to come for the tablet the other day, and I said something to him about it. If he ever had, you know, had access to an older computer that no one was really using that could just run some basic programs, and he was good enough to offer one up so we can get that system back up and running. So Great. thank you awesome. very much, Derek. So I actually got two, but what's oh. your preference, box or laptop? It doesn't matter. The one that it's replacing is a laptop. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. We have the shelf space down there to fix uh, to put that up as well. But uh, okay. I mean, a laptop it can stay closed if you, if you got that. We'll try that first, I guess. And it, it's a little more compact, so uh, you know that should be fine. Okay. But thank you very much. Appreciate You're that. Thank you. All right. Next thing on the agenda is emergency management report for August. Okay. Jim McKeon still on? Is he going to do it? I would just read it. Yeah, it's probably going to be difficult for him. So the emergency emergency management report for July and August 2022. So July 1st helped that helped with a concert in the park. Four members helped out with parking. On July 2nd, a thunderstorm with heavy rain, one inch of rain in 30 minutes caused some street flooding in West Warren area, Chapel, and Dean Streets also. A tree on wires on Town Farm Road. Some cones were used. July 3rd, test of West, um, test of Warren's sirens, um, test normal. Okay, July 3rd again, some maintenance in the cert trailer, cleaning and painting, two members helped out. Uh, July 8th, uh, the touch a truck event with the Parks Department put on in conjunction with uh, a concert. We had our Cirque trailer on display. We also helped with parking cars. Five, med five members were present. No, I just keep trying to on. I'm like, wow, that was it? So July 15th, concert in the park. Uh, the band canceled. Members worked on getting the word out uh, about the canceling. July 22nd, concert in the park at Dean Park. Members <coughs> helped. Cars and members assisted. Uh, July 23rd and 24th, cooling center was open for the senior center. Uh, due to extreme heat, certain members helped with check-ins, answering phones, assisting guests, and dozen people had shown up throughout the days. Um, August 2022, uh, on the 4th and 5th, cooling center ran again at the senior, senior center. August 6th, uh, we assisted Sturbridge Cert with Pan Am, um, Pan Mass bike race and blocking intersections. Had two members from Cert team help out. Uh, August 7th, test of emergency sirens in Illinois. August 10th, listened to statewide conference call about drought conditions. Uh, August 24th, monthly CERT meeting. Went over fire extinguisher safety and watched a video. We went through our CERT trailer, checked equipment generators, did a refresher of settings. Uh, um, pop-up pop tents with new sidewall. Um, talked over the plans of upcoming fireworks and car show put on by Cloning for Kids Foundation. Um, the car show was done on, by Cloning for Kids, right? Because they didn't do the fire, fireworks. No, they did, like, yeah, right. they did the car Sorry. show. That was done by Parks. And then um, we used we usually go to this event. We had oh, safety information. This is being held on September 10th. Seven met seven members attended the meeting. Uh, August 27th, uh, assisted police department with parking and traffic control during the fireworks. Event was held at the high school. We also had three members from the Charlton CERT to assist us. And we also had five members of the Warren CERT. So that is the emergency management plan um, report for August and July. I think June, right? Looks like it was a little bit. 
July and August. So thank you very much to CERT for helping out in the town, and thank you very much for outside CERT members coming in to help us too. So that's always a help. Okay, next thing on the agenda. Notice of filing and public hearing. This hearing was asked for by National Grid if you want to see if there is a link. Link, sorry. <laughs> link. Uh, for, for Zoom. the Zoom meeting. So what are they asking for? Okay, so this is basically they're asking for people to tell them how they feel about their plan to do the 20, 2019 to 21 three-year energy efficiency plan was approved by the department. <coughs> and so they're asking the public to please comment on that. So I'll put this up and you can see the link. It's okay. October 27th is when the meeting is. So there is a link to the Zoom meeting. Okay. Thank you. And then next thing, uh, CMRK, the town of Warren partnered with CMRK and has two bins in the back of the Shepherd building. You can donate clothing and shoes as of November 1st, 2022. Uh, Mass. Yeah. They have put a band on any kind of textiles going into your garbage. Okay, I was trying to get the context of that because it's like Mass has a band on the textile waste. Yeah, so <coughs> yeah, Massachusetts textile waste <coughs> ban is in effect as of November 1st, 2022. <coughs> so in the back of the Shepherd building, we have two big <coughs> bins and you can put all your textiles and shoes in there. Um, now, if you want, there's also a phone number where you can call and they can come to your home and do a home pickup. Okay. And they accept small appliances also. So if you go on the, our website, I've already posted the poster, mm -hmm. and you can see they have a bunch of other information on this poster. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else that we should know about it? About that? No. I do have one question for you. We, it is oh, time we now. Out of time. <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, it's time to replace all the labor laws, and I'd like permission from the board to go ahead and order them for all the buildings and the labor. It's three hundred and seventy-five dollars to do that. Yeah, we got to post them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they have to be posted. So. All right, I'll do it. Okay. So you guys don't need to order yours. I'll have enough for every building in town. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. So now we're to the next meeting date, which is October thirteenth. Mr. Chairman, Not 2021. 2021. David, 2022. David, Mr. Chairman, before you uh, adjourn, can I just ask, can we go back to comments and concerns? One thing popped into my head that I wanted to bring up to the board it, it, real quick. Um, yes, sir. had numerous, literally it just happened, and when she said something, it, it, just, it just registered. Um, I've had several uh, citizens come up to me just in the last couple weeks alone looking for uh, an outlet to get residents identification signs for their home, number signs. Mm -hmm. um, like Brimfield has done a huge promotion on it. We've done it before. We, we, we've done green signs in Warren. Uh, you know, Brimfield has done red signs. Uh, there are still quite a few houses that haven't taken advantage of that program. We don't have any currently right now. Normally the associations will buy them from time to time and hand them out. Uh, but because of the spaghetti supper and stuff like that, they have some of their money tied up in buying You know, some of that. I was just wondering, because it popped into my head if there was something the board would consider looking at a small funding source to be able to purchase these and hand them out to the residents. It'd be, it's not a, a lot of money, you know, you can get these kits, you know, even $500 would go a long way to be putting it into an account where we could bleed uh, between police and fire who deal with this all the time, we might be able to purchase these things and hand them out to the community. I think it would be a great thing uh, because we're always facing that battle where we can't find certain houses. And even if we, you know, even if we see a house on an inspection that doesn't have one, we have them to hand out and get them installed for them. So I just, I'm just throwing it out there while it was on my mind. Maybe some upcoming ARPA money, maybe out of that gift account if there's anything left, however it is. But even $500 would purchase a decent amount of those signs to be able to hand out to the public, which would number their houses and help us out, out tremendously. Can you look at that mm -hmm. see if we can do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. options if we can. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I'll work with Jim on that. Yep. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Chief? No, that's it. Sorry. Right. Oh, my apologies. So next meeting date is October 13th, 2022. Yes. 
at 6 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Rich Eye Hacker, aye. David Billies, aye. David Dufresne, aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>